Greetings everyone and welcome to another mod spotlight. I'm Jack Draco and today we're going to be talking about a mod named Jabba. Now Jabba is an acronym that stands for Just Another Better Barrel Attempt and I think it succeeds. I think by the end of this video you'll definitely agree with me. Now this is a mod by Professor Mobius uh, who also did Wayla, What Am I Looking At? which is the tooltip mod that I have installed on all my videos. Uh, so he, he does good work, I like his stuff quite a bit, and uh, so yeah, let's get started. First, as you can see here, I have eight barrels displayed. Now, if you've used barrels from other mods, it, it, you pretty much already know the concept. is Barrels can hold one item, they can hold a lot of that item. As you can see here in the tooltip, uh, this can hold 64 stacks of any one item which is quite a bit, way more than you could hold uh, in like a wooden chest. And the way you make a barrel is pretty straightforward. As you can see here, it's just seven pieces of lumber that you haven't yet turned into planks, a chest in the middle, and a slab across the top. That'll get you one basic barrel. Pretty straightforward. So one of the predominant mechanics in Jabba is that you can upgrade these barrels. So that it starts at uh, being able to hold 64 stacks of max, or at max, and you can see based on this tooltip, this barrel has a structural level of zero and zero of zero upgrade slots available. Now, what does that mean? Well, when you upgrade a barrel, the way you do that is by using right here a structural Mark One oak. This is made out of oak wood planks. Uh, they're made using planks and fences in this configuration, and this will give you one upgrade slot. You basically spend the upgrade slots to install various upgrades such as uh, capacity upgrades, some redstone upgrades, you can do some uh, redstone stuff that we're going to get into a little bit later. You can turn it into a hopper, into a B space upgrade, these ones are really cool. Um, and you can get these up so they can hold quite a lot of stuff and we're going to get into all that as we go along. <clears throat> now as you can see in NEI and also as I have laid out here, there are seven tiers of structural upgrades. So you make the barrel, you apply structural upgrades which give you upgrade slots and then you spend those upgrade slots however you'd like uh, to add on these other upgrades. That's pretty much how it goes down. Uh, and You can see all the way up here at the uh, structural level 7 barrel you actually are given 127 upgrade slots as compared to the tier 1 barrel with 0 and the tier 2 barrel that has, well I guess you could call this a tier 0 barrel, and a tier 1 barrel has a single upgrade slot. So yeah, uh, the way you make additional upgrade slots is, is pretty straightforward. Uh, you can see here that it's the same re crafting recipe as for the basic one, but you're substituting planks with iron for a tier 2, gold for a tier 3, diamond for a tier 4, obsidian, end stone and finally emerald. But it's pretty straightforward, uh, no big surprises there. So the way this works is you're gonna grab, we'll go ahead and grab a tier one structural upgrade. I'll grab a tier two one as well to demonstrate. You're gonna take the upgrade in your hand and right click onto the barrel to apply it. Uh, shift right click, excuse me. You can see if I try to go straight to a tier two, I'm gonna get a little message that says you need at least an upgrade mark one to apply this. Okay, so you have to do them in order. That means if you want a tier 7, you have to have already applied tiers 1 through 6 onto this barrel. And you can see if I try to do an upgrade, let's take a basic storage upgrade. Slots used 1 increases the storage capacity by 64 stacks. You can see that if I try to do that on this barrel, it's going to say, I don't have enough upgrade slots for this upgrade. You need at least 1 to apply this. Alright, so I'm going to shift right click to put a tier 1, oh, it is just a single right click. What? Creative mode sometimes messes with this stuff, sorry about that. Uh, okay, you can see now whenever you're holding an upgrade uh, or either a structural upgrade or a regular upgrade, uh, you, can, you get extra information on the barrel. See with an empty hand, I just see a barrel, but if I'm holding one of these things, I get some extra information. I can see that this has a tier 1 upgrade on it it has one slot available and no upgrade slots. If it had upgrade slots they would appear in this corner. Uh, like so, if I go ahead and apply the storage upgrade 
If I go ahead and apply it without actually placing it in the barrel, you can see here that I've got zero upgrade slots available, but it shows that I have installed one capacity upgrade or storage upgrade on this barrel. And you can see in the tooltip that it now hold 128 stacks max. So we, we already knew that would happen, right? Because this increases by 64. It starts at 64, so math. All right, so let's talk about some of the other upgrades you can put. I mean, the storage one is a pretty obvious choice. Uh, we're also going to grab, or I'm going to demonstrate how stickers work here too. So whenever you have something in a barrel, it's displayed on the front of the barrel, a little icon. You can also see the number uh, displayed at the top, just in case uh, you don't have Wayla installed or if you want to be able to see it without having to mouse over the block. Uh, you can see that it has one piece in it. Stickers are cool. They're really easy to make. It's just paper and then one piece of glue or slime or something in the middle will get you a sticker. This doesn't change the functionality of a barrel at all, but whatever side you stick this on is going to display just like the front side does. So I can put it on top here. You can see that now I've got another display. So if you wanted to have these, I don't know, to down inside your floor so you're walking on top of them, but you still want to be able to glance down and see what you've got, you could do that with, by putting stickers on the top of the barrel. You can do that on any side you want. So that's pretty cool. Stickers are just a neat little thing that I wanted to mention. Dollies are really cool too, because dollies allow you to pick up barrels, uh, also chests, and they will retain their inventory and configuration settings when you place them back down in the world. So I'll demonstrate. You can see this chest here is full, almost. I'm going to shift right click with the dolly. Now the dolly shows that it is full, it is holding a chest. But you'll also see that I have slowness 2 and mining fatigue 2 as a debuff for as long as I have a full dolly in my inventory. It doesn't matter if I have it selected or not, and it doesn't matter if it's even in my toolbar or not. As long as you have the dolly, a full dolly in your inventory somewhere, you'll get that debuff. Although I will say, uh, I have tested with some other mods that allow you to have extra inventory space, like, uh, like a golden bag of holding or something like that. If you have the dolly in that, you don't get the debuff. So that's pretty cool. Uh, kind of a little workaround for the debuff. But uh, it's not a big deal. You just right click with the dolly to place whatever's in it. And you can see that it retained all of its inventory and even in the, you know, the right configuration. And I can do that with a barrel as well. Put it wherever I'd like. And it retained its upgrades. It retained its inventory. Uh, it retained its stickers. So all the data was maintained, which is pretty cool. All right, so we're going to keep that dolly on us because that might be important in a little bit. Let's move along. Uh, so here I just have displayed all the different tiers of barrel upgrades. So the first upgrade we're going to talk about is the redstone upgrade. I'm going to grab a barrel here. I'm going to grab all this stuff. So I'm going to place a barrel down in the world here. And I'm going to place some redstone, like so. Now as you can see here, the redstone is not connecting to the barrel. The barrel does not interact by default with redstone at all. You can see in my tooltip that we have a redstone power level of zero, which makes sense. All right, well, let's throw some wood planks in here. By the way, another really cool functionality of barrels is uh, I can right click to place whatever, or, yeah, put whatever I want in there. Let me get out of, uh, all right, I'm getting survival mode. So now I have one stack of 64 oak wood planks in this barrel. So that's pretty cool. But if I double right click, even with an empty hand, everything in my inventory that can go in that barrel will observe. Ta-da! So all 15 stacks that I had in my inventory jump into that barrel. And that's pretty convenient. So the way you get redstone to work is you need a redstone upgrade. You can see that this takes one slot to make and it allows the barrel to emit redstone. The recipe is pretty straightforward. It's two pistons and a block of redstone in the middle. And you can see it takes one slot, so I need to first apply a structural upgrade to your one. Done. Now if, I, if I'm on my redstone upgrade, I can see that it's a tier one and it has one slot available. So now I'm going to go ahead and apply that. 
Okay, great. Well, now you can see in the bottom left corner, it shows that there is a redstone upgrade installed on this barrel, but hey, I'm still not connecting to this redstone. Well, you remember the stickers that I talked about a little bit over here where you could see the uh, contents of the barrel just like it was the front? Well, you need to build redstone facades. Now, these are also pretty easy. It's just planks around a piece of redstone. And whatever side you put a redstone facade on is where it is allowed to emit redstone. Ta-da! So again, shift right click will apply the facade. And it, it exists on the barrel itself. It doesn't actually take up a block space or anything like a micro block. Uh, and you can see it's emitting a power level zero. And to explain why that is, I'm going to grab the other item that you might have noticed up in this chest, a barrel hammer. Barrel hammers are the tool that you use to interact with barrels. They're essentially the wrench of the Jabba mod. And while I'm holding it, you can also see the uh, extra information, just as if I were holding an upgrade or a facade or something like that. And if I look at the side with a redstone facade, I also have this little icon on the top right. Now right now it's an arrow pointing up. That means that this barrel is going to emit a redstone when it is full. Now if I right click that, it's going to toggle it to a downward arrow. That means that this will emit a redstone signal when it is empty. So you could set up one facade to do empty. You could apply the other facade and have it only output when it's full. You can do some cool stuff like that. Or the third and you know, maybe coolest option is what's called gradient mode. You can see that's denoted by a line here. And this will emit an increasing redstone signal strength the more full the barrel is, the closer to its max capacity it is. So right now we have 960 out of 4096 items, which is about 25% of the barrel's capacity. And you can see that the redstone power emitted is a power level 4. As we know, max redstone level is 15, so that adds up. That's pretty close to 25% of 15. So that's cool. And over here, we're still not emitting a signal because this facade is in only it's in the mode to only output when it's full. So that's how redstone works. You can do some cool automation. Uh, if anything that you can imagine with uh, outputting redstone signals is is going to work here. Now, I will mention you cannot have multiple facade types on the same side. So if I wanted to use one of my stickers over here, I couldn't put it on the same side as the redstone. That's okay. I could still throw it on top here if I wanted to. Uh, and every side other than the front is a valid target for a facade or a sticker. So you could throw it on the back, on the, un on the bottom underneath, on either side or the top. Those will all work. But again, you can't double up on the facades slash stickers. I'm gonna grab this barrel for now. We might need that. Clean up the redstone. So moving on to our next upgrade, we're gonna talk about the hopper upgrade. So I'm gonna place this back down since we've already got it. Grab the things I need here. Now you can see in my inventory the hopper upgrade is another one slot barrel upgrade that allows the barrel to automatically output. So essentially it turns the barrel itself into a hopper and it can eject its items into other nearby inventories. Uh, you have to tell it which sides to output on with hopper facades, very similar to the redstone facades. Uh, I'm gonna pop these off here. You can shift right click with the hammer to remove those facades. The other cool thing you can do with the hammer is you can actually remove the upgrades. If you just uh, shift right click it'll remove the most recently installed upgrade on that barrel. You can also shift right click on the open air and it will toggle through a series of uh, different options for the hammer that will remove specific upgrades. So the first option here your hammer begins to resonate uh, that means that I'm going to be removing specifically the B space upgrades, which we haven't talked about yet, but we will. If I do it again, I'm now emitting a red glow. I'm now in the uh, mode where I would remove specifically the redstone upgrade. And then we have the hopper removal upgrade uh, mode for the hammer. This is the remove capacity or storage upgrades. You, I can demonstrate that one on here. We know we've got one upgrade installed. 
I simply shift right click it'll remove just that upgrade that upgrade type uh, your hammer becomes a precision tool to destruct will actually remove structural upgrades boom so we're back down to a tier zero barrel and your hammer seems to disappear this actually removes the void barrel upgrade which we haven't yet talked about but we will and returns to normal there is also a creative uh, hammer which we're not going to talk about right now but uh, okay so we've got our barrel here we've got it's a tier one we've got one available upgrade slot we already had the redstone so I'm just gonna leave that I'm gonna reinstall that but now we need to upgrade it to a mark two or tier two barrel if I want to put on another upgrade so I'm gonna shift right click you can now see where a tier two barrel I'm gonna throw on there a hopper upgrade Ta -da. you can see down in the left hand corner here it shows the upgrades that I have installed a hopper upgrade and a redstone upgrade so that's cool neither of those are actually affecting the capacity of what this barrel can hold but they are affecting some of its functionality so I can just pop that sticker off too uh, okay so what are we doing with the hopper upgrade well what we're gonna do is demonstrate outputting to a chest but to do that we need a hopper facade this is just like the redstone facades you put a chest down and you can see it'll start ticking down it's not super fast uh, so I wouldn't recommend this on any build that requires a really fast transfer of items but it will just naturally trickle the items from the barrel into the inventory on that side you can see we are not trickling items into the, re the rear chest because we don't have a hopper facade on that side now I also want to demonstrate that if we have a second facade here and a second barrel it will actually start it'll double the speed at which items are being extracted from the barrel because it evenly gives items to both uh, inventories so this is ticking up at the same rate that this is ticking up so in theory if you really needed to pull stuff out of a barrel quickly I suppose you could use all other five sides top and bottom left and right and rear with hopper facades to output all you know, five times five times as fast as a single facade would output there's probably better ways to uh, to do what you need to do there but that's an option if you just want to use Java so that's the hopper uh, that's the hopper upgrade we're gonna move on now we're gonna talk about the void upgrade uh, before I do however I'm gonna take this one with me we might need that so I prepared a barrel here earlier that is almost entirely full of oak wood planks you can see here I have got 8176 out of 8192 items in this barrel so we're only 16 items shy of being full the other thing we're going to want to do with this barrel, you can see it's a tier 2 with a single storage upgrade, but I still have two upgrade slots available. That's for the void upgrade. This requires two upgrade slots, so you will not be able to put this on a tier 1 barrel, or 0 barrel obviously. It will have to be at least a tier 2 barrel to have enough slots. And you can see that it deletes excess added items once the barrel is full. So if I shift right click, you can see down in the bottom left corner that I now have installed the void upgrade. And since this barrel is almost full, it, it's not del instantly deleting its contents, but if I try to add more contents before, uh, let me go back and if I try to add additional wood above and beyond its capacity of 8192 instead of backlogging your system or your build it'll just void those items they'll be deleted so just temporarily I need to get under the bottom here because I want to put a facade pop off the facade there throw it on the bottom pick it back up with the dolly and throw it on top so it's gonna start trickling in here and you'll you'll see once this fills up boom now it's full well this is still losing items that's because of the void upgrade remember so all these extra items are trying to trickle down into this lower barrel because of our hopper upgrade but they're just getting voided instead because there's no room in this barrel so that's pretty cool you can kind of uh, prevent having backlog in your system all right I'm gonna get rid of some of the extra stuff in my inventory here all right moving on this one's really cool uh, 
let's go ahead and grab this guy here, throw him down, and we're going to grab another barrel, throw him here. This is the B space upgrade. Now, as you can see, uh, slots used two, so this is another upgrade where you can't have it on a tier zero or a tier one barrel. Uh, a B space barrel is basically, if someone were to say the, the term ender barrel to you, it's exactly what you would think of. Uh, it links two barrels together so that they are only a single inventory uh, but can be accessed across great distances. So I'll give you an example. Uh, let's go ahead and grab all this stuff. So this is a plain barrel right now and this one we can see is a tier 2 barrel with a void upgrade and a level 1 storage upgrade. So I'm going to make this a tier 1, make it a tier 2, I'm going to make it a tier 3, upgrade this one to a tier 3, so that I have enough uh, slots to also install the B space. We'll do that, and that. Alright, cool. So now I've also got the tuning fork. Uh, the tuning fork is the tool you need to actually link the two barrels together. It's not that hard to make. It's one ender pearl and three pieces of iron. And the way this works is you're going to right click a barrel and then right click another barrel. Once you right click a barrel, <laughs> you're going to, excuse me, shift right click. Otherwise, you'll just throw your tuning fork in the barrel. Uh, I guess if you have a lot of tuning forks, that's a good way to store them. So you can see I get a little message that says the fork starts resonating. And if you look down on my toolbar, there's actually like a timer on this fork. Uh, it won't last forever. You've got a window of time before it's, uh, it stops. So wait a minute. Why won't it let me link? Cancel. Uh, it says the barrel content is preventing it from resonating. OK, so maybe it needs to be an empty barrel. So why don't we try that? Let's. Uh, I wonder if that continue ticking down. Oh, looks like it doesn't. Toolbar, yep, you can see it's metadata ticking up as it takes damage. Huh, but it freezes while it's in an inventory. Okay, so I guess if you need to halt for some weird reason, you can do it there. All right, so this isn't going to work uh, for a couple reasons. The barrels you're trying to link need to match exactly in terms of tier and upgrades. Uh, additionally, they need to be empty. I think. Pop goes the barrel. All right, so let's do this from scratch. We're going to go tier 1, tier 2, tier 3, B space upgrade. All right, so now they should match exactly. But we're going to test something real quick. We're going to put the wood back in there, grab our tuning fork, which will start ticking down again. Barrel content is preventing it from resonating. What if they match? No, all right. All right, so once they were both empty, and once they matched each other exactly in terms of upgrades and tier, structure tier, I was able to link them with the tuning fork. And you see that my, my tuning fork stopped taking damage and fully healed itself once I actually made a connection. So the cool thing here is, anything you put in one barrel is accessible and displayed on the other barrel. Ta-da! So that's pretty cool. You can see, nothing up my sleeve, no strings attached here, no, no hidden wires. Uh, they're just connected over a distance. It's, like I said before, effectively an ender barrel. So that's pretty cool. And these things have a pretty far range, as far as I can tell. If I pick one up, run it all the way over here, and by run, I mean walk slowly. Yeah, I had another barrel set up over here that I was going to use for testing. Plop it down here. It's still linked. It still retains its inventory. I can grab all the stuff out of it if I want. We've got zero stacks in there now. And you can see that this barrel over here also has zero stacks in it. So that's pretty cool. Um, they don't share, they don't combine their uh, capacity. Like if this one could hold, you know, a thousand stacks, and now it can hold a thousand stacks, you're not holding two thousand. You're still only holding one thousand, but again, it's a shared inventory across a distance wirelessly. So that's pretty cool. And you could also like, you could set this one up to have. Uh, I guess you'd have to set them both up to have a hopper upgrade and output to a chest. So like you could have, 
one of the two linked chests up in your main base or main room or whatever, and you dump all your crap in it, and then it down in your processing room or your basement or whatever, you can have it be extracting from the linked barrel for ore processing or whatever it is you decide you need to do uh, with your barrels. So that's pretty cool. And the last upgrade we're going to talk about... Oh, excuse me. That was all the upgrades. Haha. -ha. So again, recap. We have storage, which I didn't really go over storage because it's pretty straightforward. Uh, but just as an example, this is a fully upgraded tier 7 barrel with the most number of upgrade slots you can have installed on it. And you can see here that it holds 8,192 stacks of one item. So that is a lot. Uh, you can hold quite a bit if you fully upgrade it. It, it comes at a price, but it's pretty cool. The, the way you make the storage upgrades, by the way, is a barrel and two pistons. All right, pretty straightforward. But then you get a X3 storage upgrade, which instead of increasing by 64, increases by th three times that amount, 192, and uses up three slots. And then a nine, it does exactly what you'd think, it's triple that. So the recipes for these are pretty straightforward. You can either combine three of the tier one upgrade slots, uh, excuse me, upgrade uh, storage upgrades to get a tier three or a times three, or you can break down a times nine into three times threes. And so it goes that way all the way up. So you can combine three of the times threes to get a times nine, three of those will give you a 27, Three of those will give you an 81, and three 81s will give you a... Ah, oh, alright, well, okay. I was going to say it'll give you a 243, but apparently there's no crafting recipe for uh, 243, which honestly makes sense. Uh, as you can see, slots used 243, There, there's no way to get 243 upgrade slots uh, on a chest. This has 127, and it's the highest tier. So, yeah, I was curious about that myself. I'm kind of relieved to see that there's no way to craft that uh, because you wouldn't be able to install it even if you did. And there's a creative upgrade too, which basically just makes the barrel an infinite source of whatever it's, is stored in it. Um, so, that, as you can see, this is going to get pretty expensive. So, for a single upgrade, you need two pistons and a barrel. For the times three, you need three of that. For a times nine, it's nine of that. So you're going to have to have a hefty supply of wood at your disposal because each piston takes three planks and each barrel is taking seven unprocessed lumber, which is the equivalent of, what, 28 planks plus a slab plus eight more for a chest. So these things are pretty expensive in, as far as wood. If you've got a really uh, decent wood income, then it's not going to be a problem. But just keep that in mind when you're trying to have your compact storage in a really large barrel. that It can get prohibitively expensive. Uh, so we talked about storage upgrades, we talked about the redstone upgrades here, we talked about the hopper upgrades, we talked about the void upgrade, and we talked about the b-space upgrade, or the ender barrel as I'm gonna always and forever call it. Uh, which is pretty much all the upgrades. If you search in NEI for the Java mod, you can see that we covered almost everything that it talks about. Uh, and even though the other barrel types are listed in NEI, they don't have recipes. You can't craft them directly. Uh, you just have to shift through them, shift right click to toggle through them while you're holding the hammer. So I think the only thing we haven't talked about is the diamond dolly. Now where a regular dolly is a single plank and five iron, the diamond dolly is that plus three diamonds. Now the advantage of the diamond dolly over a not diamond dolly is that you can actually pick up and move monster spawners which is really cool so if I place down this zombie spawner that is insane what did I do that's a giant <laughs> all right you know what that was on purpose that was totally on purpose I'm happy that that happened all right so we've got this giant zombie spawner going crazy up in here but let's say I want to bring this back to my base to make a mob spawner a mob farm I shift right click it, boom. You can see I've still got the uh, slowness 2 and mining fatigue 2, um, just like before. But now I can walk over here. Yeah, this looks like a good spot. Shift right click, boom. Giant crazy spinning zombie spawner wherever I want it. And you can see my dolly took a little bit of damage. It took one damage. Every time you pick up and place down 
a spawner, it's taking damage. So four, five, six. So you get six uses out of it uh, before it breaks. But honestly, I mean, how many times do you really need to move a spawner? Alright guys, so this has been a mod spotlight for the Jabba mod. This is a really cool mod. It's very straightforward and very simple. Uh, a great way to store lots of items of a single type. And uh, you have some neat ways to interact with that. That zombie is just out of control. I can't even deal with it right now. Alright, hope you enjoyed the video. Go ahead and leave me any feedback you've got in the comments below. If you like what I'm doing here, go ahead and subscribe and feel free to tell me you know, what types of videos and content you guys would like to see from me in the future. But uh, until next time, this is Jack Draco and take care.